<laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of angle specificity. I haven't done one of these videos in a very long time talking to you guys, but this is a really important topic to discuss for sports performance training, so I wanted to make sure you guys understood it. So before I get into it, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you're subscribed to catch all of them. So if you've watched my videos in the way, way, way past, you're going to have heard me say two things. Number one, strength is specific. We build strength where and how we train it. Number two, we need to train how we play. What the heck? Number two, we need to train, what did I say? We need to train how we play. This video is off to a great start. So what I mean by that is if you look at each sport, it's played differently. No sport is the exact same. If you look at volleyball versus soccer, even if we're doing the same thing, even if we're jumping in both, the jumps are different. So when we come to train, we need to make sure that our training is as specific as possible for the given sport that we are playing. So like I said with that jumping example, if you're a volleyball player and you're training jumping, it's going to look a little bit different than if you're a soccer player training for jumping. While the approach is the same, the mechanism is the same, there's little things that I'm going to switch up in the strength training portion to get you as specific as possible for your need. Even if you look at something like a lineman versus um, a sprinter, right? Obviously they're completely different sports. They both require a lot of force out of a starting position but they're all different. So you can't take the same training mechanisms for alignment that you would a sprinter because you need different things. You need to have different variables. Your training goal is different for each. So when it comes to training and when we look at different angles, we need to make sure that the angles we are selecting is not only gonna help your training goal, power versus strength, which I'll get into in a second, but it has to work for your specific sport. Right, back to that volleyball soccer example, like I said, if you're jumping in soccer, let's say you're doing an approach, a run, or from a corner, right? It looks very, very different than the needs of a volleyball jump where you could be starting a little bit lower, you might need a one-step approach, all these little things. So making sure that we take our sport into consideration, if you just watch a game or watch practice, watch whatever it is, just look at how you play, you're gonna notice the angles that you do a lot of things in. So when it comes to training, take exercises that you're doing and put them in those angles, right? If you're doing a rear foot elevated split squat, for example, and you're working on uh, soccer and you're trying to be as fast as you can, maybe don't go as far low because we're never down in that position in soccer, right? We're always a little bit up higher, producing force and power from higher up angles. So when it comes to strength versus power, as I mentioned a little bit before, we're gonna change the angles as well. When we want to build strength, structural tissue, full range of motion towards the beginning of the off season, we go lower, like I said, full range of motion. But when it comes to power, we want to be higher. We want to produce power, produce force quickly at a higher angle, right? If we jump, we don't load all the way to the ground. You load to like a quarter squat and you jump out of that. So if we're doing like a trap bar, for example, you'll notice how I put it up on blocks. Depending on the training goal, it'll either be maybe one block or no blocks if we're just pulling from the ground, or if we're working on jump training, I'm gonna have it on like three blocks, for example. So if we're in that quarter squat, we're producing power, producing force in the jump angle. So it's really important you guys look at that. And the same thing goes for like running, for example. If you're a sprinter, you don't need to be producing force at low angles right a lot of your uh, force production is at a higher angle maybe a quarter uh, bend in your knee so if you're doing a rear foot elevated split squat for example a single leg rdl you want to put yourself in a similar position to what you would be in when you're sprinting you don't need that full range of motion all the way down you will need that at the beginning of the season like i said build up the strength the structural tissue get everything going good but as you get more specific you need to be really strong and efficient at those angles so the next time you guys are training for your sport, make sure you pay attention to a couple of those things. Look at the sport you play, the angles that your sport is played in, what your goal is, whether it's strength, power, all of that stuff. Those little things are really gonna impact the angles that you set up your exercises in. So if you guys have any questions about this type of stuff, about the sport you play, the exercises you do, where you should set up your angles, shoot me a comment down below. I will totally get back to each and every single one of you. Uh, but yeah, 
So I hope this video was helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one.